Okay, good afternoon, everyone. It's a minute past 12 here. Uh, so I think we're going to get started. Um, so hello and, and welcome. This is our well-being webisode, keeping it positive, self-esteem, body image, and acceptance. So my name is Emily. I'm a health services specialist here at Geisinger. And with me here today, I have Lena DiCrescio. Lena is an A certified health coach here at Geisinger. And today what we're going to do is discuss uh, what self-esteem and self-acceptance are, why it's so important in our lives, and also review some tips and tricks to help guide us to improve our overall well-being. Um, so just a disclaimer before we do get started here, this information is being provided to increase your awareness. It's not intended to be medical advice. So if you do believe um, that you may have a certain medical condition or have specific questions regarding your health, uh, we ask that you do see and talk to your physician about that. So with that being said, uh, we will get started here. So welcome, Lena, and thank you for joining us today. Hi, Emily. Thanks so much for having me. So today we're going to really be focusing on self-esteem, self-acceptance, uh, body image, and really how all these topics intertwine with each other. So to start us off, I just wanted to ask for kind of like a definition to help everyone better understand these concepts. So my question for you is, what is self-esteem and is it different from self-acceptance? Yeah, great question. So I've got a couple of definitions written out here on the slide that everybody can reference because these are some pretty big ideas. I think it can get a little confusing as they all kind of sound the same. So to start with, self-esteem is referring to what we think of ourselves, um, and that can be positive or negative. It's very conditional. It varies from day to day if our self-esteem is positive or negative, and it's all of our daily experiences that we're going through that kind of influence that. Self-acceptance, then, that's knowing that we're not perfect, but learning to accept ourselves right where we are in life. So no one is born with low self-esteem, but we develop it as we start to judge ourselves and we create unrealistic expectations of ourselves. And it's just very common for us to be very hard on ourselves, um, even without realizing it. So the idea behind all of this is to move into this idea of self-acceptance. So even if your self-esteem kind of goes up and down, this more um, unconditional self-acceptance can be achieved. So whether you're thinking about your physical, mental, or emotional traits, we can accept that um, we're not perfect, we can't be perfect, and we can recognize our strengths and our weaknesses, remove any emotional attachments that we might have towards those feelings, are towards those ideas and accept ourselves right where we are in life. And the first step in all of this is really just understanding these differences, recognizing these perceptions that we have about ourselves. And there's a nice quote there, like, in each moment, you're either practicing self-acceptance or you're judging yourself. Love the quote. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I also read that self-acceptance is an important component of our mental health, right? And that there can be so many benefits to practicing or improving this this element of our well-being. So, uh, Lena, can you tell me why it's so important to practice self-acceptance? Yeah, there's a lot of benefits that are going to come from it, um, and it is definitely related to our mental health. So if we are lacking self-acceptance, it actually affects the part of our brain that controls our emotions. So without that self-acceptance, we're often going to feel a lot of anxiety and stress, even anger. The good news is that we can practice self-acceptance and get better at it. So then we can start to experience like an increase in our overall mood throughout the day, self-compassion and more self-confidence. Um, another thing, that the higher levels of self-acceptance that we have can even help us to manage stress and depression. 
And I think it could be easier to our, to accept ourselves when let's just say life is going pretty well, right? Our relationships mm-hmm. are good. Um, maybe you're doing well in your position at work or in school, whatever the case really might be, wherever you're at in life. Uh, but we we might also face trauma, right? Or neglect hard times in our life. And those are times that are really difficult to deal with. Um, and we can't really control sometimes what life is, is throwing at us mm-hmm. and when it's throwing it at us. So I would imagine at times like this, self-acceptance can be pretty trying. Mm-hmm. Um, so in general, um, can self-acceptance be difficult to achieve and why or why not? Yeah, those are some great points. So this is definitely a process and it usually feels really foreign to us at first, um, but we can practice it and we can get better at it. Now, keep in mind those general ups and downs that we experience every day, that's affecting our self-esteem and that's still going to happen. That's conditional and it changes based on things like our behavior and just external achievements and obstacles and, you know, all of those day-to-day things. But self-acceptance is that unconditional aspect that's a lot more complex and we can develop that kind of at the base of everything. And self-acceptance also relates back to our childhood experiences, and that's going to vary drastically from person to person. So some of these concepts about self-acceptance might come more naturally to some people, depending on the background that they had. If you grew up, um, experienced a lot of trauma, neglect, or overcritical caregivers, those are the things that can influence our self-acceptance even as an adult. So once you start recognizing and working on this, um, you can overcome those obstacles from your past to an extent that are affecting your perceptions now. But building up this self-acceptance, it it really does bring kind of that contentment that's independent of those external factors. Yeah, super, super interesting that Mm -hmm. your childhood has that effect. Interesting. And, Very much so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, learning to accept all the pieces of yourself, it could be easier said than done, right? So I would imagine that this is something that definitely needs practice. Um, mm-hmm. It doesn't happen overnight. Um, so what are some ways we can start to practice self-acceptance here today? Like once we leave this call, we could start trying to practice. Yeah, great question. You're absolutely right. This is something takes a lot of practice. And again, like I said, it depends on your past experiences, where you're going to be coming into this and where you're going to be starting with it. So it might be necessary for some people to work through some childhood trauma with a professional like a therapist. But if you're just looking for some general tips and stuff with some things that you can start today, I do have some suggestions here on this slide. Um, Practicing gratitude is one. So having a gratitude journal, um, even just writing down a few things every day that you're grateful for, practicing meditation. This could be even just a couple minutes right whenever you wake up in the morning or before you go to bed or on a lunch break, whenever you could fit it in. Creating a really good support system for yourself, having people that you can lean on, friends, family, um, or professionals giving yourself, I'm sorry, forgiving yourself of your past mistakes. So really looking into some of those things from before that might be holding you back and letting go of them. And then practicing positive self-talk and reframing your negative thoughts. Those two are some of the big ones. And I have some examples to kind of demonstrate how we can start talking to ourselves in a little bit more of a positive way and reframing some of those negative thoughts. So let's say that, you know, you have a busy day at work and then you get home and in the afternoon you end up just sitting on the couch and scrolling on your phone, not really doing much of anything else. And we would often think, or a lot of people would think, oh my gosh, I'm so lazy. You know, I just sat here on my phone. I did nothing productive. So what we want to do is switch up that mindset. And instead of that being our go-to, I'm so lazy, we want to aim for self-acceptance and instead recognize that, you know what, some days just need to be a rest day and that's okay. 
I'm not lazy. This isn't bad that I'm sitting here on my phone. Um, we're just human, you know? I get, we get tired sometimes. We need downtime. Now, if we find ourselves sitting on the couch every evening and wishing that we were being more active and feeling like we're lacking some motivation or something, then we might change up our internal dialogue and say, you know, again, we still don't want to say, oh my gosh, I'm so lazy. We would want to say like, okay, I know I'm not a lazy person because, you know, I have a job, I take care of people, you know, we can, the list goes on about all the things that you do for yourself that you don't even recognize, but that are proving to you that you are not a lazy person. So anyways, you might say, you know, I'm not a lazy person. So why am I feeling like I don't have energy lately? You know, really getting to the cause of it. And instead of just being critical and judging ourselves, saying, all right, this is okay, this happens, but I don't want it to be happening every day. So what can I do differently? We can accept that we're tired without judgment. And then if we do need a solution, we can work towards that in a more positive way. Yeah. I, I think that's mm -hmm. a great example. It's very relatable. I feel like yeah. I've been there, you know, like, like laying on the couch and uh, I'm so lazy, but it, it's yeah. true. You really do. If you think about it, you're, you're not lazy. You really do do, do so much. So great. I, I think great it's example. very relatable. And I think even as I say some of these things, I, I feel like I should put a disclaimer, like some people might <laughs> feel this way or you may have it, but really right. it's, we have all done this. <laughs> <laughs> right. Generally yeah. speaking. <laughs> yes. I feel yeah. that. Oh goodness. And yeah, I love the, um, the gratitude journal suggestion. That's something that I have been doing for a while. And it's even nice to even look back on, like when oh, you're yeah. having one of those days and be like, you know what, like there is so much to be grateful for. So love exactly. the examples and you gave there. Something to mention with all of these examples is it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, I think a lot of us have this all or nothing mindset of, okay, if I'm going to do this gratitude journal, I need to have it every single morning, write these mm -hmm. down. And if I don't do it, then I'm failing, you know, mm -hmm. and we don't want it to turn into that either, you know, so take all of these things on this slide and say, you know, these are things that I can be doing that might help me to improve my well-being. These are some self-care techniques and I can use them when I need them. You know, mm -hmm. I don't have to do it every day. This shouldn't be a chore. It's something that's adding to your life, you know, mm -hmm. um, even just recognizing some of the negative self-talk that we might have, even mm -hmm. if you're not to the point of practicing positive self-talk, but just recognizing like, oh, that was kind of negative. That's a yeah. really good step in the right direction. True. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. It's a good, good point there. It doesn't need to be every single day. Like you didn't fail right. if you didn't do it every day. Exactly. Yeah. Um. So we've been really talking about our mental well-being throughout all of this, which kind of got me thinking um, about some of the other pillars of our well-being. So does low self-esteem or maybe lack of self-acceptance influence uh, any physical components of our well-being? Right. Yeah. I, I think the short answer is yes, it definitely <laughs> does. Um, and so when we think about self-acceptance, it doesn't mean that we can't make changes. You know, um, we can try to improve upon any perceived weaknesses that we might have. You know, we can make changes. It's about being compassionate and positive while we're making those improvements. So if you are wanting to focus on some kind of physical component of well-being, like maybe you're wanting to lose weight or build up muscle or increase your endurance, whatever it might be, you're going to be a lot more successful on that journey if you're practicing self-acceptance self along the way with any of those behavior changes. Because these kind of physical changes, it takes time, you know, and sustaining those behaviors like increasing your physical activity, changing up your nutrition. Um, those things are difficult and complex. And if you're also adding to that low self-esteem or lacking self-acceptance, it's making it that much harder. So by working on just accepting where you are right there in that moment, 
and practicing kindness towards ourselves, we're going to be a lot more likely to enjoy the whole process and also recognize our progress, which I think is really big. You know, if you're in this, you're making changes for your physical well-being and you're not seeing immediate results and then you have that lack of self-acceptance, then it can be discouraging and we often give up, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, But if you're practicing self-acceptance, then you can say, you know what, I'm trying and I'm doing a good job here and I've made a lot of changes and I'm recognizing some improvements and recognizing that progress can help to keep you motivated and keep going with it. Right. No, great. Great points and a great reminder, I think, that we all need when we're working towards some of those those goals. And yeah. I think in today's world, we also see a lot of images of people on social media or maybe in some of our um, advertising on TV, billboards, mm-hmm. the whole nine yards. Um, more than we actually see those type of people in real life. And what we see, I feel like it could really influence us or affect our inner dialogue. So what we're saying to ourselves and how we're treating ourselves. So um, so I just kind of wanted to shift a little bit to more towards uh, body image. So mm-hmm. Lana, can you tell us uh, what body image is and how it might be related to self-esteem? Yeah, definitely. And what a great point, you know, about all of the social media external things, you know, that we have going on. Not only are we our own worst critic, but then we also have all of these other external things coming at us. Um, But yeah, so body image like we have here on this slide, this is the thoughts and feelings that you have about your body. Um, So while self-acceptance might be It could be physical, you know, it could be mental, emotional, all of those. Body image is really just focusing on the feelings that you have about your physical body. But it is also how you perceive your body and your mind. And then also whenever you look in the mirror, which those things might vary. So with body image, it can be negative or positive, and it can vary from day to day. This is very conditional. Right. So it's directly related to self-esteem, which is conditional. So this means that low body image leads to low self-esteem and positive body image leads to high self-esteem. And so going back to what you said about the social media, this can really influence how we perceive our bodies. And there's been studies done that, you know, it really affects children as well. I feel like they are so overwhelmed with social media way more than any of us were growing up or even now um and like we said before all of this stuff goes back to those childhood experiences and what you go through in childhood influences our self-acceptance later in life so if you do have young children or if there are children in your life you know definitely help them to start practicing self-acceptance now but if we take these concepts and apply them to ourselves and we apply self-acceptance to body image, that's when we're talking about body positivity, which I'm sure a lot of people have heard of this term. It's very like a buzz term right now out there, body positivity, but it's a great concept. It's about, it's a very empowering idea that we can embrace and celebrate our bodies regardless of how they're matching up with society or any beauty standards. Again, much easier said than done, but the best thing is to focus on um, where you're at in your journey and your strengths that you have right now. We're all on our own journey with our body image and our general health and wellness. So each of us has our own obstacles and a lot of them are out of our control. So it makes it unrealistic to try to compare ourselves to someone else. We want to focus on the great things that we're accomplishing and the progress that we're continuing to make. Yeah, I think that's some great advice, Lena. Um, Mm -hmm. I think a lot of us at some point in our lives have had something we might have wanted to change about ourselves, And uh, to me, it's so much more than what's reflected in the mirror. But I mean, we, we, well, I should say, some of us might have had that thought right so Mm -hmm. um or most of us and we might have feelings of worry dissatisfaction maybe we get a little stressed out 
about our image mm -hmm. sometime. Um, can you touch on the potential consequences of uh, having a negative body image? Yeah. Um, well, as we already, you know, went over, it definitely has that direct link to self-esteem. So low negative body image um, relates to low self-esteem. But then there's other things as well. It can also lead into body shaming, disordered eating, mental health issues. And this is a really scary list, you know. But keep in mind, there's things that we can do to change our mindsets towards self-acceptance and a positive body image and body positivity. Um, on the screen here. Oh, sorry, Emily. Oh, no. Um, go I'm going off script a little. <laughs> <laughs> um, on the screen here, we have this slide on negative and positive self-talk. You know, this is one of those tools that you can use. Um, self-talk is that internal dialogue that we have with ourselves, and it can be critical or it can be motivating. So depending on how you talk to yourself, um, it's going to affect your image of yourself and your self-esteem and all of these other concepts right right and what are some ways that we can foster a positive self-image and do you have any resources that can help support those that are interested in improving these types of aspects yeah definitely geisinger has a lot of resources um but also don't underestimate the small changes, right? Things like listening to this webisode, attending a mindfulness huddle, reading an informative article from the quick dose emails, each of these smaller things might spark a new thought or feeling within yourself. And it's all these little moments that really add up and give us that bigger change that we're looking for. This isn't something that you're going to do overnight. You know, it's going to take time. So, with that being said, there are some bigger steps that you might find helpful if this is something that you're interested in. We've got the quarterly calendar listed here um, with the link that if you wanted to sign up for any events like those mindfulness huddles, different challenges focused on self-care that are going to be coming up will be on there. Um, another one is the health coaching that we offer. So as you said at the beginning, I am one of the health coaches, <laughs> so I might sound a little biased, but it is a really great program. So with health coaching, you know, we really meet people where they are on their journey and we provide evidence based education on physical health topics, you know, things like diabetes and high blood pressure, high cholesterol. Excuse me, but we also focus on a lot of these topics like self acceptance, positive body image, and we're ready to. Um, so, if you're ready to engage in some lifestyle changes and um, want to kind of be working with somebody, bouncing ideas back and forth, and then a big one is having accountability with somebody calling you regularly, checking in, helping you to identify some of these areas where maybe you're being a little hard on yourself and helping you um, to boost up some of these positive aspects, then we would be happy to talk with you through health coaching. And um, we can go over a number of topics like mindfulness, intuitive eating, you know, self-acceptance, all of these things. And then lastly, on the slide, we have behavioral health, the phone number um, for Geisinger's behavioral health. Like I said, because some of these topics are so complex and they relate back to sometimes like childhood trauma, it might be something that is out of the scope of a health coach even, you know, and it might be beneficial to talk to somebody like a therapist. So we have some great programs through Geisinger that they can do an evaluation and see if you would qualify, if it's necessary, and um, get you set up with somebody to talk to. Right. A bunch of great resources here uh, from mm -hmm. the quarterly calendar to, yeah. to health coaching, behavioral health, great, great resources. Um, and there is so many other parts to us than just our body and, and how we look. Yeah. And I think sometimes we might be harder on ourselves and yeah. say things to ourselves that we would never necessarily say to others or like our best friend. And uh, it's easy to be our own worst critic. I, I feel like that is very true for me sometimes um, mm -hmm. and to listen to negative thoughts that pop up in our head. Um, but I think my last question, uh, just because we're almost at time, is yeah. 
Is self-acceptance really ever complete or is it something that you think we continuously work on? Yeah, I think it's definitely something that we're always working on. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. just whenever you get to a place where you're like, I feel really good about myself. <laughs> and something <laughs> Life's going to throw you a curveball and, you know, you're going to have one of those moments of low self-esteem. You know, something's going to happen. Um So that's why it's so important to reach out for help in whatever way you need to and, you know, um, accept that help, you know, from Mm -hmm. wherever it might be coming from. Because, yeah, we are our own worst critics. You know, I'm sure a lot of people have heard of the idea of like, before you say something to yourself, imagine, would I say this to a friend, you know, or a family member? And most of the time, like, oh my gosh, no, we would not. I would never right. talk to a friend the way that I internally talk to myself. Um, but these are deep-rooted things that we need to continuously be working on, recognizing it first, and then trying to take the steps to change these perceptions. And, you know, like we've gone over, then there's a lot of benefits um, whenever we kind of switch our mindset in this way. Right. Exactly. And learning to accept yourself for who you are can be really challenging. Um, But I think today we've learned a lot of different ways to really embrace ourselves, gain perspective, uh, the resources you gave, the benefits. I feel like we did learn a lot today about um, self-acceptance, self-esteem, body image and and all that. So I do thank you, Lena, for really sharing uh, your experience and your tips with Mm -hmm. us today. Um, And I also want to thank everybody who tuned on to listen to this conversation. I really hope you found um, the information useful and relatable. Um, And we do have a minute or two if anybody had any uh, questions. I believe you can use the Q&A feature if you did. Um, Or if you think of a question later on, you can always shift it to our uh, wellness inbox. So wellness at Geisinger. Dot edu. Um, so I'm just going to pause here for a second, see if anything comes in and go from there. Okay, I don't see any questions popping up immediately, Um, but if you do have questions, uh, feel free to um, either email me, Lena, the wellness inbox, um, and we can always get you an answer to that or guide you in the in the better direction. Um, But um, next month, our topic for the well-being webisode is on exercise. So it's called Exercise 101 Fitness Basics. So a lot of great information to learn there about physical activity, exercise. Um, so be sure to join us. Um, but with that, I will let you all go today. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your week. And thank you again, uh, Lena, and all for joining. Thank you for having me. Absolutely.